In this video, we're gonna take a look at a well-trod subject on this channel, and that is cask ownership and how you prove whether you own your cask or not. So welcome back to the channel everyone. You might be watching us because you've got an interest in whiskey bottle investment or cask investment. And we've got loads of videos and blogs on this subject. So make sure you visit the Mark Littler website to go and read some more and watch some of our older videos. And in this video, we're kind of giving you a refresh of some of the most important things about cask ownership. And that's whether you can prove that you own the cask that you've paid for. Now, the reason why I'm making this video, because we've already got other videos about this, we'll sort of put links to those in the comments below is that the law is still being abused. Companies who are profiting massively from the sale of casks to private individuals are still not transferring the ownership to the, to, to the, to the people that are buying them. And more recently we've seen, or I've seen instances, so email chains that people have forwarded over to me where, where basically they're being lied to. They're saying that HMRC and the Scotch Whiskey Association are actively discouraging private individuals from taking ownership of the casks. And look, there's no other way to lie, you know, to sort of frame that. It's just fraud. It's just lies, which is worrying. And I'm passionate about this subject. So let's take a look at the basics again. There are two bits of legislation that govern cask ownership. You've got the statutory notice 1999 number 1278, which is the warehouse keeper, keepers and owners of warehouse goods regulations 1999. And you've got excise notice 196. So how does cask ownership work or the transfer of cask ownership work? You've got a bonded warehouse, which stores the casks. When you sell a cask, you send something called a delivery order to the warehouse. It's signed by the buyer and the seller. The warehouse keeper acknowledges it and transfers the name on his records or her records to say that this new person owns the casks. Why does this happen? Because under statutory notice 1278, section 5.3, it says relevant goods must not be sold while they're being kept in an excise warehouse unless they give notice of the sale to the authorised warehouse keeper. So the law says you have to inform the warehouse keeper every time that good is sold. What is a delivery order? We've got a video on this, but essentially there's no legislation around delivery orders. The delivery order is just the formal notification of the warehouse keeper that the buyer is happy to the buy and the seller is happy to sell and the ownership is transferred. If the warehouse keeper says to transfer the ownership, you've got to go up to his warehouse under a full moon and give him a kiss on the cheek. That's what you have to do. The warehouse keeper creates his own rules. So the point being here is that if you've bought a cask and you've not had notification from the warehouse, the physical warehouse where that cask is being stored that is now transferred into your name and the 90% likelihood that that would have been from a delivery order, then it's likely that you don't own that cask. So if you look at your certificate and cask paperwork, which again are meaningless really, the, the certificates are just printed bits of paper, and you see the term beneficial title or bailment, this video is for you. And we're gonna look at what these terms mean. So look, obvious caveat here, I'm not a lawyer, seek your own legal advice. The point of this video is basically to get you to take this a step further. If you've only got beneficial title or bailment rights to your cask, you need to go and seek legal advice to see if the contract is relevant and, and robust enough for, for your purposes, to, you know, to survive a five, 10, 20 year holding period. But so just use this video as a sounding board. I'm not a lawyer, go and do your own fact checking, use this as a starting point. One of the most commonly used methods of giving somebody a certificate with rights to a cask is to use the term beneficial title and beneficial title is really when a person has beneficial or beneficial or equitable title to the thing that the property represents so for instance a good example would this would be a farmer a farmer might own or or or, or, or rent a thousand acres of land and he's able to take the profits from what he makes from that land and keep himself so the landowner owns the land, but the farmer has got beneficial title to use that land and, you know, take the profits from that land. How is this relevant to casks? It just isn't, you know, 
why should I have beneficial title to a cask? I should own a cask. Under the statutory notice 1278 and excise notice 196, it says that if you're not a revenue trader, as in you're a private individual, then there's nothing stopping you taking full ownership of that cask unless the warehouse doesn't want you to. And that's another question. But with beneficial title, the real problem comes with Ponzi. How have you even had any external verification that that cask exists? So if you just got a nice welcome pack and a nice certificate to say that you own that cask of whiskey, do the most basic form of due diligence, find out which warehouse that cask is being stored in and find out if it's being stored in your name. Because again, I'm gonna sound like a broken record. Look at that statute you notice 1278. If the warehouse keeper wasn't informed that that company has sold the cask to you, then they've, it would appear, broken the rules outside, like out, outlined in that notice. So there's, there's already sort of like alarm bells going off here. But the key thing here is it's, it's, you need to own that cask. And if you haven't even externally verified whether that cask exists, you're in hot water. And, and why am I so passionate about this? Well, I've been helping people exit their cask investments for, for over five years now. And we've dealt with so many people who bought in the 1980s, the 1990s, the 2000s, and the 2010s, who are coming now to sell their casks and the company's gone bust, they can't get hold of them, they don't know where the casks are, they speak to the warehouse, they never existed in the first place. This isn't just me sounding off because I'm a madman. This is me trying to help you because this is history repeating itself. Look at the articles in Forbes, what the Scotch Whiskey Association says, what Whiskey Magazine says, what Cask and Still Magazine says. Fraud has been rife in the cask world for a long time and this use of beneficial title has been one of the key ways that these companies have been able to operate. So the second terminology that you might have come across if you've bought a cask and have not actually taken ownership of it is bailment. Now bailment is slightly detached from beneficial title in terms of that bailment is under two people, the bailer who is the owner of the goods and the bailee who is the person who is using it. So under English common law, the right to possess an item is separate and distinct from owning the item. So for instance, here's a really good Whiskey World example. You own a bottle of 1970s Ardbeg. You want to sell it, so you send it to an auction house. So you, the bailer, send it to the auction house. The auction house is legally able to possess that item and sell it on your behalf, and you will receive the funds from that sale under the contract because you were the owner of it. So how does that work with casks? Are you receiving that cask? No, it's staying in a bonded warehouse. Bailment, under the definitions that we've looked at, is a temporary thing. It's kind of like when you park your car in a car park, or you leave your car at a valet, or you get a watch from a jeweler's to try for 24, 48 hours. It, it's a temporary exchange of goods under a contract, and it, and it typically involves exchange of the asset. So this is even more removed from beneficial title for cask ownership. And you come across the same problems. What are the problems with bailment? Again, have you got any external proof that that cask exists anywhere in the world? Or have you just got a piece of paper with a pretty heading on it that says that you bought that cask? Number one, find the warehouse that is storing it and see whether it's held in your name. See if the warehouse keeper was, in, it was notified as statutory notice 1278 section 5.3 says it does. Again, I sound like a broken record, but if, a, if somebody can't transfer the ownership of the asset or cask to you, why are they in business? Why are they going through all these little workarounds? And the thing is, if you're spending money on a cask, you need to be confident that you are the sole legal owner of that cask, because it's not about now, what happens in 5, 10, 15 years time? You know, do your due diligence now. If you've already owned a cask, seek some legal advice on the contract, but obviously go and check that it exists by speaking to the warehouse keeper. So there we have it. I'm, I'm sorry, it's quite a ranty and, 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 and somewhat negative video in some ways, but I'm really concerned that so many people are buying casks and don't even know that they don't own it. They've just got rights to it or title to it. And that's risky. It's risky because it's, it's not necessarily relevant. You know, the law says that you don't need 
to have these titles. The law says that you can own those goods no problem as long as you're not a revenue trader. So if you're not a revenue trader and you're a private individual, the law's on your side. It's saying that you can own those goods without it being stored under somebody else's company name. So use this video as a starting point and there's lots of other information on our website and our blog and on our other videos as I've mentioned. And if you've got any questions, get in the comments and we'll be happy to sort of help you and point you in the right directions of people that you can contact.